Hey guys, it's Hayes with CheatCheatPros.com and today is January 11th, 2022 and we're going to take a look at some NBA sports betting picks for today. I've got three games that pop on the early sheet, but before we get started, I like to show people kind of how I use the NBA sheet, what I'm looking at when I'm looking at sports betting and our model and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and recap the games from last night and show you the differences. So the difference in our model, the total plays overall went 7-6. and six. But if you look at a difference of five points or more, then our plays jump to five and one. So I'm going to show you what I'm looking at when I refer to difference of five and one and whatnot. Out of the seven and six, four of those plays were only two to three point differences. And one of them was a six point difference. So that would have been the loss. And I did post a screenshot of this, so let's go ahead and get started. I've got the games from last night over here, and then this is the sheet from January 10th. So let's go ahead and just start up here at the top. So Charlotte-Milwaukee, I'm looking at this game. So I tried to clean this up real easy and put the main model projections right here. So it gives you a projected score, a total um, in terms of Vegas spread. And then over here, we've got a difference. So which side the model likes and a difference by. So that way, if you see a difference of... Some people use a difference of seven, some do six. I just happened to look at five last night and five was kind of a good split for a win-loss record. So that's one that I'm gonna track going forward. And then as always, all these other stats down here, there's several tutorials to take a look at, but we're gonna focus on just this kind of up here. Um, so when I'm looking at this, so the Milwaukee spread, they were minus two and a half. Uh, Charlotte was plus two and a half. It moves a little bit throughout the day. And so you can see here that our model had Charlotte by 10. So we actually had Charlotte winning this, winning this game saying they should be minus seven with a score of 118 to, well, roughly 119, 112. So about 230 total points. So when you're looking at this, you can see that our model likes Charlotte to cover by more than 10 points of the spread. And then we lean the under by five points. So you can see we've got a projected total here of 230. And then the Vegas line is 235. And I believe this got up to, I saw 237 and a half, 238 last night. It was flying up. So that's one you might want to look at some research. Come down here, look at the over under trends for home road and whatnot. Um, but then looking at this game up here. So here's the game. So it definitely went under. It was on pace after the first quarter to go way under. So the under covered, it was a difference of five. So that was a win. And then we had Charlotte winning by seven. And they end up winning by four, but they were a dog, so that was a win. So that starts off, so let's go win, win. So we're going to look at differences of two and a half points. And then let's go down here to the next game. So we're looking at Houston, Philadelphia. Real quick, I'm going to glance here. So the over by two, it's not a difference of five, so we're going to go ahead and stay away from that. That is a play that I really did like, though. It did not hit, but it's one of posted plays I went with. But as you can see, my model did not like it. And then Philadelphia with a difference of 13. So since this is greater than five, Philly is a play we would want to take a look at. So we had them winning by 23, 125 to about 102, 228 total points. So Philly almost covering twice the spread. And then let's go over here and take a look at this game. Make sure you can see it on your screen. And so, yeah, they end up winning by, see, 91, 101, 20 points. So we had them winning by 23. They won by 20. Spread was 10. So... Philly is a difference of 13, so that was a win for us. Uh, the total we didn't get, but again, it was only by two points. So we're going to say if it's less than four points or less, we're not going to consider it a play or take a look at it. Um, Cleveland, Sacramento. Uh, Cleveland, difference of four. We had them winning by nine, but the spread was five and a half. So a difference of four is not enough for a play. Although I did kind of like that game, so if you wanted to go with it, you could. Um, you can see right here, they were on track to cover it. But then the second half, they gave up 59 points and only scored 47. So they would have been on track to cover, but they blew it in the second half. With their recent ATS trends and the new acquisition, I just wanted to stay away from that. But we had under by nine. So since that's greater than five, so we got 220, we got 211. So we'd come down here and take a look at it. And so, yes, it went under the 220. It was pretty close, but it went under. So we're going to say the under here is a win. And then let's go ahead and move on. So we got Brooklyn, Portland. Uh, Brooklyn, they've been struggling recently. They were minus nine and a half. So 
Obviously, we have Brooklyn winning the game, but only by two points, so 112, 110. So this leads to take Portland, and we got them covering by eight points. So Portland plus nine and a half is where we would have leaned. And then let me make sure that's on the screen. You can see they end up winning the game outright as a nine and a half point dog. But if you took the points, you were pretty much cruising in the second half. Um, as far as the total, we only had a difference of three, so that would not have been a play. Uh, go down here to the Knicks. So difference of six. And then the under by two. Two's not enough for a play, but a difference of six. We like that. So we would have said, okay, Spurs are going to lose this game by one. And they're getting six and a half. So we're going to go ahead and take the six and a half. And you can see here, this was a loss. So we're going to write loss. Did not get that one. And then we're going to go down here to Boston. Oh, there it goes. So Boston was kind of a push. We had Boston by seven, line with seven, so no play. Over by two, not enough for a play, so we're going to go ahead and move on. Detroit, Utah, we had Utah by 13. Spread was 11.5, so difference of two. Total by three, not enough for a play. So this is going to give us one, two, three, four, five wins, one loss if we do a difference of five. So Something to keep an eye on. I post my plays, the plays that I look at that I like. They don't always necessarily agree with the model. But again, the NBA cheat sheet has a model score for every game. And the only time I would fade it is if there is a huge change in the last three because there's a heavy weight on the last three games. So, for example, if Brooklyn has James Harden and Kyrie Irving out for three games, their numbers are going to skew down and then suddenly they're coming back it's not going to project an accurate score for them. So just make sure of the differences. And then I also, let me show you one more thing. When looking at NBA sports betting, I like looking at, whoop, let me get that blown up so I can draw it. I like looking at this right here. So I can see kind of where they're at on the season and where they're trending the last three games. So here you can see Utah was sliding down a little bit, but we know it's because Go Bears been out and Detroit was bad. They're still bad. And then you can kind of break down these stats. And then over here, I love the ATS trends to see what they are, home, road, over, under, et cetera, et cetera. So those are a lot of fun. So that was yesterday. So let's go ahead and take a look at the games today. So I'm going to pull up the cheat sheet today. And then to find our trends, I'm just using Odd Shark over here, which I won't pull it up, but we'll take a look at it. So some of the games that I do like, I'm going to flip down through here and just kind of give you my opinion on each game. So Golden State and Memphis. Let me go ahead and pull up my trends over here so I can go over those while we're talking about the game. So you can see my model has Memphis by, and we write it right here, model has a range of 9 to 12 points. So we've got a pretty good uh, spread here. Um, Golden State's minus 2.5. Draymond Green has already been ruled out. So since Memphis is getting 2.5 points and we have a good shot at them winning the game outright, you can see here we got a difference of 15 and 10. So these are going to be recommended model plays if that's something that you do follow. So one of the plays that I'm going to post today is going to be Memphis plus two and a half points. Um, looking at this, Golden State's two and four in the last six games, ATS. So they're struggling a little bit. And they've only scored 96, 96, and 82 points over the last three games versus the likes of Cleveland, the Pelicans, and Dallas. So they've been struggling. Curry's got some type of a thigh injury, so his shot hasn't been falling. And then Memphis, they're 6-0 ATS in the last six games, 9-0 straight up in the last nine, and they're playing at home, so they're going to be pumped up for this game, so I like taking the points here. You could go with the under. I'm trying to fade some of the unders, but the model does show an under here, and we're looking at a, a big difference here. So Golden State's been playing at 99.3 possessions over the last three games and 101 on the season, so they're pretty consistent with their pace. But Memphis is at 102.9 and 106.8 over the last three games. So, I mean, this game could go anywhere from around 99 to 100 possessions up to 106, 107. Uh, we know Golden State can run if they want to. So I don't feel real comfortable with the under here. But if it's something that you were dead set on, I would be fine with it. You can see Golden State right here. They're a 25 and 12 under play. And then Memphis, they're 20 and 20, but they're kind of coming back to earth. So our play here is going to be Memphis plus two and a half. And then going down here to Minnesota, New Orleans. So Minnesota's been money for us. Every time we've posted them since the big threes returned, they have absolutely smashed. So I'm going to pull up their trends here, kind of take a look at it. So Minnesota's five and one ATS in the last six games. Now the total is 
uh, over in 12 of the last 17 games. So they're 12 and 5 overplay recently. And then the Pelicans, they're 1 and 4 straight up last 5, 5 and 2 ATS last 7 at home. So that's a good trend for them. But they're 1 and 6 ATS in the last 7 games against Minnesota at home. Kind of a crazy stat. But Minnesota, in the last two games, they've scored 141 and 135 points. So they are on fire right now. Russell's back. Towns is back. I think uh, Towns dropped 40 last game. I can't remember off the top of my head. And then the Pelicans, they've only scored 101, 101, 110, 104 over the last three games. But they have had tough matchups. They've played Toronto, Golden State, Phoenix, and Utah. So... Tough matchups there, but again, with Towns, Russell, everybody coming back for them, they're doing uh, pretty good. And you can see here, we got a difference of 13, so that's more than five. So we like Minnesota as a play. So Minnesota minus four is going to be the second play that we release. And we have them winning by a range of 10 to 17 points. Uh, we think Minnesota, this minus 17 is a little skewed because they've been rolling the last game and Pelicans have had a tough schedule. So I'm not saying go out, take an alternative line of Minnesota minus 17. I'm just saying, hey, this number is bigger than the Vegas line of four. Go ahead, bet the minus four. So even if they win by five, we're still good. We've got some cushion built in there. Um, as far as the under, model says under. I can't really take an under on a team that scored 275-odd points the last two games. And then when I look down here, when I'm looking at unders, I want to see if these are the same or if there's a gap. Since there is such a gap... An under is one I usually want to stay away from, or I'm going to follow the team that's favored because they are likely to control the pace of the game, be ahead, and do what they want. If they want to run, they'll run. If they want to slow it down, they'll slow it down. So in this case, Minnesota is favored by four, and they're playing at 107.2 possessions over the last three games, which league average is about 102, 102.5. So 107 is astronomical. Um, but again, that's why Vegas pegged this at 227. But then the Pelicans, they're playing down at around 99.1 to 100.7 on the season. So I kind of average these out for season last three, and then I average those out to project at about 102.7. But that's a middle ground, and that's still giving you 219.6, so about 220. So that's why it's saying, hey, we want to go under here. But again, I'm trying to fade some of the unders. Um, and we're going to look at the trends over here. You can see the Pelicans on the season as far as points per game, 25th. They're up to 21st, so they're doing slightly better. Minnesota skyrocketing, 12th on the season, up to second over the last three games. Um, as far as the ATS trends for Minnesota, you can see I've got a little two-day and an arrow, so you know exactly where to go. They're 9-12 and 12 ATS at home, 13-6 and 6 ATS on the road, so they're really good. The Pelicans are 11-8 and 8 ATS at home, so they are also pretty good. But again, the big change here is Minnesota's got the big three back. They're finally healthy, and they are rolling. So I like the spread of four. I don't think the Vegas algorithms and power models have caught up yet. So moving on to this game. So I love the Bulls. If you've ever followed me, I always have the Bulls. They're one team I love the player props on, and Levine and DeRozan and all those guys. But I just can't fall in love with this game. So when I'm looking at the trends here, so our model has... Uh, Bulls by seven. Well, the line, they're laying 14. That's a lot of points to lay. So here you could say this is greater than five. So the model is saying take Detroit plus 14 because it has them only losing by seven. Personally, I can't put my own money on that because I love the Bulls, but I sure as hell am not going to lay 14 with them. So when I'm going over here and I'm taking a look at the trends, in the last 10 matchups, Chicago is 9-1 and one and 8-1 and one ATS against Detroit. But Detroit's 4-2 and two ATS in their last six games. The tricky thing with Detroit is they could lose by 30 or 40 points, or they could win the game. We saw them last night come back and uh, have a big win in there. And then Chicago, I follow a lot of their trends. They're 1-4 and four ATS in the last five games. So prior, a uh, couple weeks ago, we were all over Chicago because the power rankings for all the Vegas books they didn't have enough line for them, and so we were killing it. Now they've kind of caught up, and it seems like they've overcompensated because now the lines are skewed, so we have to stay away from Chicago in this game, but I can't back Detroit. I mean, any team that's 3-17 and 17 on the road over here, 9-10 and 10 ATS, if they got a negative ATS record, I kind of fade them, but if you're doing a big crazy parlay and you want to put Detroit plus 14 in there, why not? Um, as far as the total, we got under by 4. Again, that's less than five, so not really something that we want to go with. But this is what I mean by the pace over here. So we've got 101 to 103. I love this 
pace projection because you can see Detroit's playing at 103.8 the last three, which is 1.1 over their season number. And then uh, Chicago, they're, what's that, 0.9 under their season number. So they're not like skewed way up, skewed way down. They're kind of right there with what they're at on the season. And they're both really close. So if we do an average of 102.2, I think that's pretty fair. We've got this game projected at 2.11. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the calculator here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking 2.11. I'm going to multiply that by 102.2. And it's going to give me 215.64. Well, around 216.5. It carries out some decimal places. And it's 220. So we have it slightly going under, but it's close. Um... But that's kind of how we look at that. But again, not a play I'm going to roll with. Model likes Detroit plus 14. I'm not going to bet it. You're welcome to. I'm tracking that as one of the model plays to see how it does. Going over here to OKC in Washington, we have a difference of one, difference of two. Those are less than five, so we don't have a play either way. Our model has Washington winning 112, 102. So Washington by 10, spreads nine and a half. Eh. We have it at 214 and a half, spreads 216 and a half. Eh. Nothing really exciting. I've already looked over the trends. Nothing that really pops out at me. I really like Washington in this game, but I can't get there laying 10 points. I think that's too much. And then let me look at the trends real quick. And then the trends are favoring OKC. That's the scary part. So you can see here, OKC, they're 25 and 14 ATS. So all of the power rankings that the Vegas books are using is light on OKC and they're performing better. So that's why they have a better ATS number. Um, these teams played in November, looks like November 26th, and Washington won 101 to 99. I don't know if Beal was in that game. I don't like it enough to go look at it. But OKC is 4 and 1 ATS in the last five games, but they are 1 and 6 straight up in the last seven games. So that's kind of tricky. Now, if you want to look at something, I don't mind doing a trend over here. Um, so Washington is favored by nine and a half. And when we come down here and we look at the pace and possessions, so Washington's playing up at 105.8. So since Beal's been back and Dinwiddie, they're playing pretty fast. So I think they can make this game speed up a little bit. Now, OKC, they're playing less than league average, so they'll probably slow it down. But if we average out at 102.2 by 210, we get about 214 points, which is just under this number. But this is a middle ground. So since Washington is a heavy favorite. I think this can get up around the 104, 105 range. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So let's say 104.5. Let's go a little heavy on the Washington side. So 104.5 times our projected pace efficiency of the game is 219, which slides over the total. So I don't mind an over here. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at the trends. So Washington is a 6-3 and three overplay last nine games, uh, but it is... Six and or four and two for the under the last time these two teams have met, and then OKC is a five and one under over the last six games. So the trends might shy me away from it, but again, if you're just looking for some extra action, I don't mind sprinkling a little bit here. Typically, if I'm gonna bet something, I'm also gonna look for a live bet cover or middle because you can get some huge middles in there. Um, Phoenix, Toronto, this is gonna be my third play that I released today when I put it out. So Suns, Raptors, let me pull up the trends. So you can see here, uh, difference of seven under by five. Five is kind of right on that number. So if you want to look at an under, you can. Um, I don't mind the projection here for the total because you can see all of these are pretty close to the same. There's nothing in the 90s. There's nothing over 105. Everything's 100, 101, 102. So we could safely say 101.2 by 2.12 is about 218 and a half which is sliding under the total of 223 and a half. Again, I don't like betting unders. I can see it, but I would probably side towards an over in this play, but it's right at five. So I'm tracking it for a model play, but I personally probably will not bet it or I have not at this point, but I do like Toronto by seven because that's greater than our five. So Toronto's getting four and a half points and we have them winning by two, 110, 108. So I want to go over and take a look at the trend, see if there's anything that's going to throw me off. Um... Let me see. These teams have not played yet this year. Phoenix is 4-2 and two ATS last six games. And ironically, the over has hit in nine of the last 13 games for Phoenix. So that would lean to an overplay. 
Um, and ironically, Phoenix is 14 and two ATS in the last 16 games against Toronto. So the trends heavily favor Phoenix, but Toronto is six and one ATS in the last seven, and they are a 10 and one overplay in the last 11 games. So even though the model says under here, due to those trends, I would not bet the under because everything is pushing towards the over the way these teams are playing right now. And you can see the combined points per game last three between the two is 224, which is slightly over. So that would be enough for me to kind of shy away and say, hey, I know what the model says, but I don't love it. But again, I'll track it as a model play, but I may sprinkle a little bit on the over here. I don't mind it. But again, our play is going to be Toronto plus four and a half. And then in recent games, what jumped out at me is Phoenix is coming off of a thumping where they got beat by Miami 123 to 100. And then the last two games, they've only scored 100 and 106 points. But Toronto, they've put up 105, 122, 117, 129, 120, and 116. So I'm going to grab the points in this spot. And that's going to be the third play that I go ahead and put up for the day. And oh, I just deleted that. Um, Denver LAC. Yeah, let me throw that back out. All right, let's go back, look at Denver LAC. And so we've got a difference of five kind of on the money. So this is basically saying Denver's going to win by seven. And to be honest with you, when I posted my plays, I did not see this Denver game. I didn't scroll down far enough. So Denver's minus two. Um, we've got them winning by seven. So that's right on the money at five. So Denver would be a model play if you want to go with that. And then just to recap the plays that I got that I'm going to post in the article today is do, 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 is going to be these three right here, just to go ahead and recap. So right here, we've got Memphis plus two and a half. We got Minnesota minus four. We got Toronto plus four and a half. Um, and then the model plays we went over, the difference of five went five and one yesterday. The plays I posted only went two and two. So I'm all about honesty. If I miss it, I miss it. But these are the three plays that I'm going with so far this morning. So good luck, guys. Follow us on Twitter. I may add Denver in there. I haven't decided yet. That's one game I got to look into. But I wanted to show you how to use the sheet, the plays I like today. So have a good day, and we'll see you soon.